Hey everybody, hey bookers, welcome back to another video with me. I'm so glad to have you here. Thank you so much for being here. As always, thank you so much for choosing me over and over and over and over again. I really do appreciate it. And I'm so also very happy to hear that so many of you guys are reading. It's so special to me when I get a DM or anything from any one of you guys saying that because of you, I read. And I can't tell you how many people have stopped me either in a bookshop or in a mall and said, because of you, I read. I'm so, so glad you are readers now. Yes, I love it for us. Um, so a video that I haven't done in quite a while is a book haul. And the reason being, I don't do book hauls that much because I share some of my books in my vlogs, but some books don't make it to the vlogs. It's just like, well, I mean, I bought it and then I forget that I bought it and then I put it away and then I remember that, oh yeah, no, I didn't talk about this book. So here we are. We're going to share a book haul of some of the books that I picked up in the last three months, I'd like to say, uh, at the beginning of the year. And I'm going to show you some you may have seen, some you may not have seen, but I kind of thought that, you know what, let's show the book lovers some love and let's share some of the books that I've picked up. And maybe who knows, maybe you can pick it up and we could read it together. So if you'd love to see this video, please stick around. I'm so glad to have you here. Let's get into this video. Mm. It was good. It's good. The first book I have here is Filthy Animals. And I think this is by Brandon Taylor. And I think, I think I may have picked this book up late last year, but I don't ever remember sharing this book on the channel. This is a short story collection. And you guys know, you know, you know, the secret lives of church ladies, you know, the dangers of smoking in bed, you know, I am quite a big lover of short stories. So this is Filthy Animals by Brendan Taylor and Brendan. I always confuse Brendan and Brendan. Anyway, so this is a number of stories. What connects the stories is the tension between the surface of things and the intensity of our inner worlds. <laughs> With the exquisite empathy, Brandon Taylor shows that though violence hovers at the edge of many encounters, so too does tenderness and love. And I, that's all I need to know. I really don't know what's going on in this. I don't know how many stories they are in here. There's 11. And funny enough, there's a story called Meat in here. And there's also a story in The Dangers of Smoking in Bed called Meat, which I loved so, so much. So I'm looking forward to this. The reason why I picked this up is because I've read so much about how Brendan Taylor is such a great author. And because I haven't gone to find uh, his book that I really wanted called um, Real Life, I decided to pick up his short story collection and see how I feel about it. And then... I will make more of a concerted effort to pick up real life and some of his other works. <laughs> the next book I have here is My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. Now, if you've been following my reading life online, you know that thrillers are some of my favorite books. I love them because they're fast paced, they're quick, they get to the point, they keep you in suspense and a thrill. And I've heard wonderful things about the works of Samantha Downing. Now. The one that I picked up is this one called My Lovely Wife. And it's about this married couple who has a very deep, dark secret. Okay. And yeah, that's all it says. They have a very dark, deep, dark secret. You might think you've read stories like this before. You'd be wrong. So I, I, I ju I'm just like, okay, what is the secret? Are we going to be doing like suburban thrillers? You know, is there something that they do? Are they assassins? Do they kill people? Are they cannibals? What's going on? And I love how floppy this one is. Really, really excited to read this one too. The cover is uh, exceptional. I love the cover. I think it's pretty good. The next book is by Anthony Doer, and this is Cloud Cuckoo Land. Now I've heard wonderful things about this book. I will show the Western cover of it here, but it is essentially somewhat of like a speculative fiction. And it's across space and time where five dreamers, five wonderful dreamers are bound together by a specific and particular ancient text. And that's all you know. It talks about a world that is in danger, the power of words, resilience, and hope against all odds. That's, that's, that's it. You know, I think a lot of the time I like to 
know more about certain books before I pick them up, but I've heard wonderful things about this one. Um, and one of his other books that I have is All the Light We Cannot See. This one right here, right here. All the Light We Cannot See, and I've also heard wonderful things about that one. So, Cloud Cuckoo Land. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Next up is Bunny by Mona Award. You must have seen this in one of my vlogs. This is a book I've wanted to get my hands on, and I'm so excited to have gotten it because Mona Award is one of those other authors where you feel like, okay, a lot of people seem to love her books. And I'm just trying to understand why. But one of the ones that sticks out quite a lot is Bunny. And Bunny follows these group of, you know, imagine picture, excuse me, picture Regina George and her squad, okay? But this one is in an MFA program at a university, right? So you're picturing these girls who are very popular girls and they go by calling each other bunny but now the thing is they do very strange see the sun the thing is they do very strange things right they practice some forms of witchcraft and they do really really funny things now we follow samantha heather mckay who is fascinated by this group of girls and some way somehow she finds herself in this group and we start to find really funny odd awkward really like I, I feel like a lot of people have read this book and said what did I just read and for me I love that I want to be like what did I just read so Samantha McKay finds herself in this group of popular girls that go by calling each other bunny but they do very odd weird uh, practices that might involve a little bit of witchcraft as well. So it's witchy as well. Really excited to try this out. That pop of pink cover is stunning. I'm not even going to lie. That is a beautiful cover. Um, and the bunny, uh, cute. But I don't think it's got a cute connotation in this. Uh -uh. Bunny. The next book is by Kennedy Ryan. And this is Before I Let You Go. In this book, we follow Yasmin and Josiah. Yasmin and Josiah are a recently divorced couple who have children. And this is a romance novel, but not the fluffy, smutty romance. This is something, when I read the synopsis, I felt like it's very akin to Seven Days in June by Tia Williams, because these are people who are together so it's a second chance romance because it seems like even after they divorce, they still hold a lot of love for each other. But it follows really difficult subjects like grief. Something happens um, in their marriage. Um, I'm not sure if it's the reason that causes the divorce, but something happens in their marriage. They divorce and they end up having to look after their two children. Is it two children? I don't know, but something happened in the marriage that just couldn't save their marriage. And I know the themes are parenting, grief. So there's really hard themes in this romance novel, even though it's a second chance at love kind of romance novel. And that for me is exciting. This is something that I want to read. These are the romance novels that I like to read. Not just every now and again, you know, you could throw in a smutty, you know, <clears throat> But this, really looking forward to reading this. In fact, I might just pick it up. Oh my God, we love those. So if you know anything about me or you've been following me for a while or you know me outside of the um, social media space, you will know that I love Greek mythology. Song of Achilles was one of my favorite books by Madeline Miller and I really enjoyed it all because of Greek mythology. One of my favorite movies is Troy. I did Greek mythology in school. I love, love, love Greek mythology. So I had to pick up Ariadne. And this is by Jennifer Saint. I cannot tell you how long I've been looking for this book. So the day I saw it, I was like, I know that's right. I know that's right. So in this book, we follow Ariadne. She is the daughter of King Minos. And... Her whole life, she's been growing up listening to the sounds of the Minotaur. And the Minotaur is this, this, this animal, right? This, this uh, beast that grows up. Ah, this beast that is dangerous and that is locked up in, you know, below, in the grounds, in, in a labyrinth below her home. This Minotaur, Minos, is Ariadne's brother. 
And every year, Ariadne's brother demands a human sacrifice because, you know, spill blood. You know what I'm saying? Just to keep him there, keep him in t just, just, just give me something I can eat or do something with every single year. Blood must be spilled. A sacrifice must be made. However, then enter Theseus, who is the prince of Athens. He arrives and guess who Ariadne falls in love with? Yeah, but guess who is the sacrifice who's supposed to be delivered to Minos, Ariadne's brother? So you can imagine. You know what I'm saying? You can imagine that it's just like, but I love my brother, but I love him. So I'm really, really excited to read this. I've heard great things about this one. That cover, probably one of the best ones I own. That's an exceptional cover. Oh my. I love it so much. So, so, so excited to read this. And this one is Secretly Yours by Tessa Bailey. Again, I must have featured this in one of my recent uh, vlogs. And I received this kindly by Jonathan Ball Publishers. Now, they sent me this. I mean, I love them. They love me and I love them. And there's other things that I'm going to show you that are going to make you love them. I'm just saying. So this is a romance novel where it is kind of like a hate to love, where we follow Halley and Julian. And Halley and Julian grew up together in this town, and Halley had the biggest crush on Julian. And when they're 14, something happens and they almost kiss. Almost kiss. Fast forward all these years, Julian comes back home. He leaves and he does whatever, wherever he does it. He's a professor, right? And then he comes back home, and when he comes back home for something in particular, um, Halley is hired to revamp the gardens of the Voss household, so Julian's family, right, of the Voss household. And she's thinking, oh my God, <laughs> this could be my opportunity, okay? <laughs> I could do it, like that almost kiss, I could do it, right? Only to find that Julian is this grumpy professor. He's this old ass man who is just grumpy and mean. And now we have this. I mean, I used to like you, but I don't like you no more. What is going on with you? So that's all I'd like to know. And uh, this one's got a very long synopsis. I don't want to know. That's all I want to know. I want to know how they break it down. That's all. Okay, then we have... Another one that I wanted to pick up, but I've always seen it in the stores. And then I thought to myself, I don't like this trade size. I don't like trade paperback sizes. I like them when they're slightly smaller. So I saw it and I was like, finally, it's the size that I like. And this is Black Cake by Charmaine Wilkerson. And this is about Eleanor Burnett, who will not let her secrets die with her. When her estranged children, Benny and Brian, reunite for a funeral, they receive an unexpected inheritance. First, a traditional Caribbean black cake to remind them of their roots. Secondly, the story of a decades-old murder that shatters everything they thought they knew about their mother. But as Benny and Byron unre unravel their family's troubled past, will the truth push them further apart or will it reunite them and fulfill Eleanor's final wish? It sounds lovely. So we're talking. So we're talking uh, 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 family generational, intergenerational family dynamics, which I'm really, really excited to read. I love those kinds of books where we're going intergenerationally, where we're looking at the kids, the parents. We're looking at dynamics, love, betrayal, probably grief, probably as well. So I'm so excited. So excited. I mean, what do you even mean, bro? So Jonathan Ball Publishers noted that I graduated uh, from my life coaching and they sent me some books for myself and for you. Yay! So I picked up some books from Jonathan Ball Publishers. Thank you so much for loving me the way you do. I love you too. And you help me love my subscribers even more. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. So they sent me some books as a congratulatory, like, well done for your graduation. But they also sent me some books for you guys. So excited. So excited. And the books that they sent me for you guys, I have, it's just three copies of the same book. And I have that book. It's sitting right over there. Okay. So the first two books that they sent me is this one. This first one is a nonfiction novel. And this is by Chelsea Pottinger. And this is The Mindful High Performer, Corporate Mindfulness Coach. 
and founder of EQ Minds, a simple yet powerful shift to recharge your mental health and perform at your best in work and life. Do you not think I will love this? How thoughtful is this, right? It's so thoughtful because I am a coach now. So reading books like this, making notes, um, so that when I interact and talk and advise, navigate, counsel my clients, she's going to come in very handy. When I'm doing my worksheets, my programs, all of that, she's going to come in quite handy. And the next one that I'm very excited about is Mame. Now, this is a general literary fiction by Jessica George. I was raised to be Mame. Now I want to be me. In this one, we follow... Maddie. I think her name is actually Maddie, but they've called her Mame all the way from her growing up. And she is a Ghanaian daughter to a Ghanaian mom and dad, and they are in London, if I'm not mistaken. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yes. So she's always been the one to look after her parents, the one that they depend on and all of that. And she hasn't really gotten a chance to actually live her life. Her mother travels in between uh, uh, England and Ghana. And she is now left to look after her father who is struggling with Parkinson's disease. And something ends up happening and Maddie is forced to face the risks and rewards of putting her heart on the line. So she eventually gets an opportunity to actually live her life as Maddie instead of Mame. But then tragedy strikes and she's forced to make some really, really hectic decisions. <sighs> Come on. Oh my gosh, there's multimedia in this. I just saw Google. I just saw Google. Ooh. Okay. So excited. So especially for you guys, we've got four books that um, Jonathan Ball has sent us for you. And you have to be following me on Instagram and on here to be able to be eligible for these giveaways. Everything will be communicated on the gram. I haven't thought it out as yet, but I just want to show you. One of the books is this one. This is Healing Through Words by Rupi Kaur. Now, the people at Jonathan Ball know that I am very big on mental health and they know that healing, growth, uh, productivity, learning, trauma, all of that, and moving through that and working through that is a very important part, not only of my life, but of my newfound career path. So they sent us Rupee's workbook, basically, where you answer some prompts and you, it's, it's a great way. I've got my copy as well. And it's a great way for you to be intentional about your feelings, be intentional about what you're going through, the relationships that you have with people, and actually have an inward look at yourself and about what is going on through your life and heal through all of that. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for you guys to receive this. I haven't, I'm not even going to lie, I haven't worked through mine yet because I've been so busy, but... I'm ready for it. The next one, three copies of this. Now, now, ma'am, ma'am, Mr. J. Shetty, ma'am. Okay, I've got Think Like a Monk right there. And just above it is Eight Rules of Love by J. Shetty. Okay. The author of international bestseller Think Like a Monk offers a re revelatory guide to every stage of romance. Nobody sits down and teaches us how to love. So often we're thrown into relationships with nothing but romantic movies and pop culture to help us muddle through until now. <sighs> He's just wonderful, isn't he? Instead of presenting love as an ethereal concept or collection of cliches, Jay lays out a specific actionable steps to help you develop the skills to practice and nurture love better than ever before. Are you kidding? As someone who's just a lover of love and a biggest romantic and all of that, I'm so excited for three of you to get these and one of you to get this one. So, so excited. So make sure, because I know a lot of you guys that are here are the guys that love the books. Some people don't watch the book videos. And I understand that. It's not for everybody. But guys, hello. Hey, hey, 
You're welcome. Thank you so much to Jonathan Ball. That's pretty much it from me. Lots of books. <laughs> Lots of books to put away back onto my shelves. These are the books that I've picked up in the last three months, I'd like to say. Um, some gifted, most bought by me because I am a reader and I do like to support uh, bookstores, publishers, and authors with their works. And that's why I continue to buy books as opposed to just receiving books and doing and not buying them. You hear my chat. As always, thank you so much for choosing me over and over again. If you liked this video, please like, please subscribe, please join the JK family. Would love to have you here. I'm gonna film some really, really exciting videos after this one, so say excited. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for choosing me. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, happy reading and sayonara.